Kyle Larson's priority for the double in 2025 is the Coke 600. Watkins Glen's getting a new tire, which should make for an interesting race. Plus, I need to issue a correction about the France family owning charters. Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. Hand up. I got something wrong in regards to the France family being able to own charters or not own charters. It's my Jim Calhoun, Emeka Okafor should have taken Ryan Gomes. I f up. I didn't take Ryan Gomes. Type of situation here. I messed up when I read it on Saturday. I, I read it in a different way than maybe it was interpreted or supposed to be read, and that's on me. So here's what happened real quick. I posted a video the other day saying that the France family cannot own any charters. That was part of the charter agreement. That is not true. So let me read off to you uh, what I read from the AP on Saturday before I made that video. And it says uh, four charters remain held back by NASCAR earmarked for a future manufacturer that might join Chevy, Ford, or Toyota. Toyota in the Cup Series. A summer proposal from NASCAR suggests that those charters should go to NASCAR and that the France family that runs the series should be able to field teams. So I read that as those four charters that are currently earmarked for a new manufacturer will not be going to the France family and the France family will not be fielding teams. That's on me for insinuating. 100% got it wrong. So on Monday, a different article from the AP came out and in there it says it has also... <clears throat> It also has language that would allow the series owning France family to hold charters and field their own teams, according to multiple team owners. That is what is in the charter agreement that was signed by majority of teams, 13 out of the 15. So it does sound as though the France family members are capable of buying charters and fielding their own NASCAR Cup Series team if they choose. And I just do not agree with that at all. As much as I like what NASCAR is doing, I like what the people that are in charge are doing, I think that we're heading in the right direction. I don't like this at all. This feels very much like you're going to bring unwanted scrutiny on yourself, and it's just, to me, not worth it. The juice isn't worth the squeeze in this situation. We see it play out with Team Penske and IndyCar. Roger Penske, of course, owns the series, and that team has constantly met with people in the paddock being like, I think they probably get preferential treatment over everybody else, constantly calling or saying that things might be unfair. There's a lot of questions around. And yeah, they did get hammered for, for their cheating scandal earlier in the year, but that hasn't, you know, waned and caused anybody to be like, oh, yeah, no, things are going really great over here. It's constantly, I mean, just at Gateway a few weeks ago, we had Brian Herta questioning whether or not uh, Joseph Newgarden gets preferential treatment from race control. And it honestly just does not seem like it's worth risking the integrity of your championship and your sport to have this happen. It's like Roger Goodell, if he came in and bought the New York Jets and all of a sudden they started winning, which wouldn't happen because they're the Jets. But if they did, People would be like, well, are they getting calls going their way? Are the refs doing things to make sure that the Jets win the game? This is the same type of situation. Are we going to have people being like, oh, uh, is NASCAR calling things in a way to allow this team that's owned by the France family to win races, to be competitive, to contend for a championship? And I just don't know if it's worth risking the integrity. And when you constantly have calls about the integrity of the sport, sometimes just, sometimes unfairly, um, I just don't think it's worth it at, in the end of the day. But apparently they will be able to hold charters and field their own teams. It does not sound like those four charters that are earmarked for a manufacturer are available to them. They would have to go out and buy their own charters if they so please. But I mean, Action Express might be coming to the Cup Series at this point. If you're not familiar, Jim France, the CEO of NASCAR, also owns IMSA, currently fields a team in the IMSA Series, which would be Action Express Racing as that number 31 uh, Cadillac the wheel and Cadillac, if you've watched uh, IMSA this year, that is his team. And I, I, is there a conflict of interest there? Yes. Have they gotten preferential treatment down there? I wouldn't say that the calls are maybe as strong as they are in IndyCar with Penske, but man, is it still like, do you want to introduce that variable and, and have people question it? I just don't think that it is worth it. Moving on to the biggest topic of the day, Kyle Larson, Hendrick Motorsports, Aaron McLaren, Zach Brown, Jeff Gordon, Tony Kanaan made it official on Tuesday afternoon. Kyle Larson will return to the Indianapolis 500 in 2025 in an attempt to actually complete the double this year. Of course, his attempt at it in 2024 was ruined by rain and then humidity down in Charlotte. And man, things just couldn't have gone worse for him in all honesty. And then it left him after that weekend sitting around for a week plus waiting to determine if NASCAR would grant him a charter or not so that he would remain championship eligible. He, of course, remained championship eligible. You have a ton of people being like, hey, if he didn't skip Charlotte in favor of the 500, he would have won the regular season championship. Yeah, you're not wrong. If he wouldn't direct at Michigan a couple weeks ago, would have won the regular season championship, would have finished Two spots better at Darlington, wins the regular season championship. Uh, it's a lot of if, ands, or buts. At the end of the day, he still 
uh, spotted the entire field a full race weekend and only lost by one point, which I think that's more impressive, honestly, than than anything. But in 2025, Kyle Larson will return to the Indianapolis 500 in an attempt to complete all 1,100 miles of the double. The difference this year, his priority is the Coke 600. They said that going into the 2024 edition of, of him attempting to run the double, they very much mean it in 2025. The Coke 600 is the priority in 25 for Kyle Larson. Rick Hendricks said it did not matter if Kyle Larson was leading the race. When that time came where they have to pull him out of the car to get to Charlotte in time, should the Indianapolis 500 run long, should there be a weather delay in the morning, something along those lines, he is coming out of the car. Tony Kanaan will get in the car and finish the race. Kyle said that he believes he owes it to his team to get down to Charlotte for the Coke 600 next year. And I think all of that falls into line. Steve Phelps, president of NASCAR, was at the announcement on Tuesday afternoon at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. And I assume there were discussions with NASCAR over this. And obviously the NASCAR brass, Jim France, Steve Phelps, potentially whoever it was, was not happy that Kyle Larson and Hendrick Motorsports prioritized the Indianapolis 500 this year and put the Coke 600 on the back burner. That's why they made them sweat out that entire waiver decision for over a week. I mean, he raced at Gateway and didn't know if he was actually championship eligible or not, which is kind of insane when you think about it. But for 25, Kyle Larson will be at the Coke 600, whether or not the Indianapolis 500 gets weather delayed or not. Hopefully it doesn't. I mean, it was the first time in, what, over a decade, nearly, what, 15 years, basically, that it had been uh, affected by weather. Unfortunate. I'm going to be at the 2025 Indianapolis 500. And I'll be honest, my track record this year with races I've attended hasn't been great. I started off with the Daytona 500. And you know what happened when I got to Florida? It rained for three days straight. Uh, didn't get to see any racing on Saturday. Didn't get to see any racing on Sunday. Um, Monday, you're like, oh, man, it better not rain on Monday. Beautiful day. Rained a touch in the morning, but everything was fine after after that. Then I go to the, the Indianapolis 500, rains there, delays that race by about four hours. I go to Chicago. You'll never believe what happens there at the street race. It rains again for the cup race. I did manage to go to the Brickyard 400 this year and not get impacted by rain. So maybe the bad luck has turned. Uh, I did leave the rain jacket at home. So maybe I'll leave the rain jacket at home for the uh, Indianapolis 500 next year. Hopefully rain doesn't affect it. I want to see Kyle Larson complete all 1100 miles. He was very stout in this year's edition of the Indianapolis 500. No reason to expect him to not be as strong, if not stronger next year. Uh, Aaron McLaren, obviously the second best team at the Speedway right behind Team Penske. They just need to find a little bit more in terms of speed. And maybe Zach Brown and McLaren need to just go out and hire Michael Cannon away from uh, AJ Foyt Racing because that's the reason Penske is so strong with their technical alliance with with uh, with AJ Foyt. They can go out and say that. Oh yeah, we went back and did our homework. Listen, in one year, your homework doesn't go from qualifying, f I think, a best of 14th amongst their three cars in 2023 to sweeping the front row in 2024. That's not doing your homework. That's getting access to Michael Cannon's notebook because the guy is an absolute genius at setting cars up around the speedway. So McLaren, go out and hire that guy. Give Kyle Larson, Pato Award, Nolan Siegel, and Christian Lungard the best opportunity to win the Indy 500 next year. Um because that would be absolutely incredible to see uh, Larson contend for the win next season. But his priority is the uh, Coca-Cola 600. He will be in Charlotte regardless of what happens in Indianapolis. Hopefully we don't have to worry about weather though. And then the last topic of the day, the Watkins Glen tire compound for this weekend for the Cup Series being brought by Goodyear should make for a very interesting race. Goodyear in their tire notes said that they expect three seconds to fall off over a tire run, which is really drastic. That's a lot of fall off in all honesty. Uh, obviously when some teams went up there to tire test, they said it was around six seconds. Obviously teams start setting up cars better. Goodyear gets a better dial on the, on the tire. And it sounds like it has leveled off around three seconds, which is a pretty drastic fall off, which is a good thing. That is certainly not a bad thing, but it could cause a bit of chaos in this race. Traditionally, teams set up in their strategy for uh, Watkins Glen, basically any road course really, but at Watkins Glen, where they pit this race backwards. As soon as their fuel window opens, they pit, and then that's how they run this race. Now, if the tires start to wear out before that fuel run is over, that could make for some interesting decision-making on Sunday at Watkins Glen. It is obviously, as Goodyear noted in their in their. Uh, press release, it is the super speedway of road courses, which it absolutely is. It is a very fast road course, not the most technical thing in the world, very fast, 
And with that amount of tire fall off could lead to a very interesting strategy and, and some choices that are going to have to be made by these teams. Obviously, stage breaks uh, really affect how this is going to be played out. And honestly, you're probably going to see guys still have to decide whether or not they want to go for stage points or if they want to go for the win. But if the tire fall off is dramatic enough, that could really deter some people from going for a win or if you could just straight up be people pitting every single time that a caution comes out. So you don't really have to worry about necessarily if you want to go for a win or go for stage points. I don't know. It could be pretty interesting. Is it going to be as dramatic as three seconds? I would argue that we'll probably see a little bit less than three seconds just because these teams are so good at setting up a car and they're getting 40 minutes of practice uh, for each group. So they're going to learn a lot in that 40 minutes. And Juan Pablo Montoya, people forget maybe that he's in the race this weekend for 2311 Racing, going to give him some extra track time as well, which is not necessarily a bad thing. He definitely is going to need it. And that should be a cool story to follow throughout the weekend. I mean, Juan Montoya, Shane Van Gisberg, and AJ Allmendinger, along with NASCAR's best, like that's a pretty stout field in, in all honesty. So should be a fun time. But hey, three seconds of fall off is not a bad thing. Bring softer tires to every race. I mean, we need more tire wear. Like we had at Atlanta uh, this past weekend, where I think on door bumper clear, TJ Majors said that RFK's engineer said, oh, yeah, you can probably run 300 laps on these tires. No, no, we don't want that. I get why they I get why they do it. But man, give us some tire wear. Give us some strategy in these races. Uh, make teams have to make choices. Make drivers have to drive these race cars and conserve tires or burn tires. Make that decision. It makes for more entertaining racing. So. Let me know in the comments what you think about the France family thing. My apologies for getting that incorrect. I hate when that happens. Um, Kyle Larson and his priority being the Coke 600 next year, as well as the Goodyear tire fall off that is predicted. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Breakheart, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Breakheart Blog.